the Lord has put things in the earth to teach us about him. Water. Water takes different forms. Water can be a liquid, it can be a solid in the form of ice, and it can be gas. Three separate distinct forms, yet all water. And he says, I'm using this to teach you about me. I'm the father of creation. I'm the son of redemption. And I'm the Holy Ghost in keeping you in the earth. But I'm God. Not three separate gods. Not God the father. God the... I'm just water. I'm God. I'm the spirit. I move. Anything with more than one head is a freak, including God. James chapter 2 verse 19, James chapter 2 verse 19. You believe there is one God? You do well. <laughs> the devils believe also and they tremble. You can't believe there's one God and not do something about it. Even the devil does something about it. To the Lord, Lord, yeah. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Who can compare to your great word? Worthy of all praise, that's what is your name. I'll sing a song of your great name.
together just for a moment. Nobody like our God. Nobody like Jesus. He's worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We worship you this morning. Forever I will praise you. I hope you like what you feel. Because if you plan on going to heaven, you're going to experience this for all of eternity. The Bible says he's from everlasting to everlasting. There is no end. So you better enjoy what you feel. You better like what you feel. You better enjoy praising him because it's never going to end. It's never going to stop. So I like praising him. I'll tell you why else I like praising him. When we begin to praise him and glorify him, then he wants to move and to operate. When the people begin to praise, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So when we begin to praise, God shows up. God enters into the atmosphere. And when he shows up, anything is possible. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer because we know he's here. Two or three are gathered in his name. We begin to praise and worship, so he's inhabited our praises. We've got pages of names here this morning. Needs that have been written down in faith. There will be names that will show up on the screen here in just a moment as well. Let's remember Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Let's pray for America. Mary Duran needs our prayers, ladies and gentlemen. Charles Reeves, David Willis, Lester Wright. Families with loss, let's remember Bruce Elliott's senior family. That's the father of Judy Skluzacek. That service was held this past Friday in West Virginia. Let's remember the family of Charles Johnson. That's the father of Tanya Clark, uh, the brother of Deborah Lucas. That visitation today, 5 to 9 p.m. Service tomorrow at 10 a.m. All at the Lone Star Pentecostal Church in Heinston. And any other need that may be represented, let's signify that with a raised hand. Needs all across the house. Let's join together. Take our knees before God. Either grab the person's hand next to you or put your hand on their shoulder if it's proper to do so. And let's reach the heavens with our faith, with our prayer, with our intensity and ask God to touch each and every need and request. Every name that was wrote down in faith. Every name that appears on that screen, God. Over every situation that I called out, God. Families with hurt and loss and pain comfort them over every hand that was raised here this morning God there's family situations there's physical situations there's emotional and mental healings that need to take place there's addictions that need to be broken there are chains of bondage that need to be destroyed we pray in the name of Jesus that you will do that God In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Alexandria, where God is doing amazing things. Step across the aisle briefly. Tell somebody hello this morning and what God has done for you.
Amen. Welcome to Sunday morning at the POA, church members. You can be seated when you get to your seats, I'm sorry. To all of our guests that are with us, we are so very happy that you chose to be with us this morning here at the POA. So very glad to have you. Whenever you entered the doors this morning, you should have received a Connect Weekly. In that Connect Weekly, first time guest, there is an attachment. If you will please fill that attachment out and take that to one of our two welcome centers. We have a gift for you and we would like to tell you how excited we are that you chose to be with us. Our two welcome centers are in the foyer. There's one out straight to my right and out straight to my left. As you leave, please take that to our welcome centers and we would love to just share with you a gift how excited we are that you chose to be with us at the POA. Can we welcome all of our first time guests? It is time for our Sunday morning tithes and offerings of blessing and honor to be able to give unto the Lord. As the ushers come, I do want to bring your attention real quick. Do be sure to pick up a Connect Weekly that will keep you up to date on things that are going on here at the POA. Our marriage retreat is coming up in, two, in, for, uh, in October. Um, registration is now available for our marriage retreat. Back to school service is next Sunday night. Pastor Andrew will be preaching that. Baby dedication is August the 26th. Please register online. And it is time for our offering at this point. It's a blessing to be able to invest in the kingdom of God. We give of our first fruits and anything beyond that, God blesses us. What a financial plan that God has presented us. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to give into your kingdom. We owe you our first fruits, our 10%, God, but you bless us when we give abundantly, God. I pray over every individual that gives here today abundantly that you will bless them abundantly. Bless their homes, their businesses, their finances, God. Release the supernatural in their life, God. I speak it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ushers, you can begin to receive the offering. Why don't we all stand together? Let's go to the Lord and worship. We are standing on holy ground. Let's worship a holy God.
day in the dead of night We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire Cause we's all run to things we know just ain't right But there's a better life Say there's a better life You got pain, he's a pain taker Sing if you feel love. You feel love. He's a way. He's a way maker. Oh, if you, you need, need freedom, a saving, he's a prison saving savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you can receive it. If you can't feel it, somebody testify. Testify if you feel it right now. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify.
How great is it in here this morning? How powerful is it in here this morning? How anointing. We've been praying and fasting and consecrating all week long. And this morning we've come to celebrate the fact that he's a chain breaker. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. God bless you all. It's just a pleasure to see you. You may be seated for just a moment and we'll get up and read the scriptures. I want to tell you that God did a miraculous work and thank you for your prayers. Thursday night we taught over 500 leaders in Ecuador. <clears throat> they were at that meeting. Brother Bernard was there and they were combining our churches there and the president of Colombia, Peru, uh, I'll name all those soccer teams down there. You two know the soccer team down there. Argentina, Brazil, they just were all piled in there. They had over a million people, not, not at the service, but the presidents of those countries represents over a million people that have been born again of water and spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. And then Friday night we had driven, it's four hours from Quito's back down into the jungle at, at Santa Domingo. And when we got there, if you'll throw that up there, I want to show you the first thing I walked on the platform and I turned to Brother Lamonis and I said, when are we coming back? I mean, it was out outside. They've got screens out the back of that building, out both sides. The light was so bright you can't see them, but there's that many outside than there are. You see those screens hanging on the side? They had screens all the way around that, that tabernacle. And there were thousands, they had 12,000 chairs set out. Every chair was full. And when I preached, I mean, it was, it was 100 degrees down there and I, I was soaking wet. And when I got through preaching, we gave, I didn't get to get through preaching. They started rushing the platform. We had hundreds get the Holy Ghost and hundreds healed in the name of Jesus. That's your prayers. They said somewhere between 12 and 15,000 and the Holy Ghost fell and hit that place. It was a mighty outpouring of God, which I'm thankful for. Then about 10 or 10.30, I left and we drove back through the jungle and got uh, four hours back to Quitos at two o'clock. And then I got up at 4.30 yesterday morning to fly back here to be with you. And uh, it was quite a day. Cancel flights. I was in Miami last night at seven o'clock. They said, there's no way Jack had gone to Houston to pick me up because I finally got a flight to Houston. I got on that. We got out the runway. They said the brakes are bad. So we went back to cancel that flight. So I said, get a flight to Dallas. So they got me a flight to Dallas. Jack drove from Houston to Dallas, picked me up in Dallas. We left Dallas at midnight last night. We got here at five this morning. I'm ready to have church. I didn't do all that just because I love you, though you know I would have. I did not do that. If it was just love, I'd have stayed in Miami. I can love you tomorrow. But I've been weeping over this message all week long because I know what God's going to do. Mickey tried to tell me not to come. Gentry called me and said, Dad, don't do that. I said, Gentry, you don't understand. There's something on me for Sunday morning that I can't tell you. I'm not going to be able to run all over the place, but I want to tell you. I'm not going to say it's a prophetic word. We'll know at the end, but I feel like God has a prophetic word for this congregation this morning and that God's going to do a work in the Holy Ghost. Let's stand together. Thank you, prayer teams. We hit every school, this church and our neighbors and other churches that joined us. We prayed over every school in Rapids Parish yesterday. Could we thank our moms for prayer? They went to every school. Thank you, Mom, for prayer. I'm so glad to have my guests here today. Thank you for honoring me and coming. I'm so glad that you're here. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And with given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. You show what you believe that the Lord did for us. This morning, I will preach on the Feast of Freedom. 
the feast of freedom. He's a chain breaker. Would you put your Bibles down and could you help me praise God like he deserves to be praised? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The story that I will begin my message with today is a story that you will recognize a little bit, but you really won't understand it because I've never taught it in depth, nor have I preached it in depth. It is one of the most amazing stories that's ever been written. Uh, when you look at 1 Kings chapter 24 and 1 Kings chapter 25, if you want some homework, go home and read those two chapters. Because when I start telling this story, you're going to think it's something that Hollywood put together. But it's something that Almighty God put together. It seems like an unbelievable story that God will allow to fall in 1 Kings 24 and 1 Kings 25. If you can picture with me just a moment the beauty of the dining hall in Babylon, scripturally, the majesty, the pomp, and the splendor. There was there a man by the name of Evil Murdoch. Now that, that's his name, Evil Murdoch. He is now sitting at the head of this magnificent throne in Babylon. He is now king of Babylon. When suddenly in that banquet hall, there walks in a man stooped. And his figure is broken. He had been in prison for 37 years. And it had taken its toll on him. And this stoop, frail figure is called forth. And he is given a seat above all the kings of Babylon. For now, from King 24. It had been 37 years since Nebuchadnezzar invaded the city of Jerusalem. And when he invaded the city of Jerusalem, he took the queen mother and he took Jehoiakim, who was serving his eighth year as king of Judah. And he took Jehoiakim captive and he brought them down to Babylon, where Jehoiakim was to be kept in solitary confinement. There, Jehoiakim, the uh, king of Judah that had now been captured by the king of Babylon had languished for 37 years. And evil Merodach came to the throne and his first act was he himself went to the cell of Jehoiakim that had been there for 37 years. And he said to him the most powerful words that a man could hear. He said, sir, you are free and you are pardoned and you are delivered. I didn't give it to Will. I don't know how fast you can get it there. But 2 Kings 25, 28 and 29 tells you what evil Murdoch said. And he spake kindly to him. And he set his throne above the throne of the kings that were in Babylon. He said, I'm going to take you that had been in prison for 37 years. And I'm not just gonna set you on a throne in Babylon, I'm gonna set you on a throne that is above all the kings in Babylon. And he changed his prison garments. And he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. King Evamorda, the king not only took him out of prison, but he told him to take off his prison garb and to dine at the royal table with the king. I want this portion of scripture. I want this amazing story to be our communion service this morning. The powerful feast of freedom. I declare this day at POA through the word of the Lord. To be a day of deliverance. Whatever has you bound. Whatever you have been coming against. Proverbially, whatever has had you jailed. 
Whatever has had you in prison, memories of the past, relationships of the present, uncertainty of the future, the overwhelming needs of the present that had you locked down, whatever your circle of condemnation had you locked up in or jailed, the tormenting accusing spirits, the inflexibility, the habit patterns that have seemed too difficult for you to break. Today, in the name of Jesus, you are coming out of your prison and you will be set free. I don't speak that as a pastor this morning. I speak that to you prophetically. I walked to this pulpit. I did everything I could do to get home for this service because Sister Tinney, I was reminded Friday night when I took that platform, Brother Barnes, I had been used passionately in this great organization as a passionate soul winner that preached on soul winning. And he grabbed me right here, the last BOTT he was at. And he said, son, come here. Boy, he called me boy. Boy, come here. I got something to say to you. He said, the gifts of the spirit are resident in your life. And you're getting ready from this point on to operate in the gifts of the spirit. So today I tell you in the name of Jesus, I have not just come here as your pastor. I have come here to declare a prophetic word to you. You will be set free and the chains will fall off. Curses will be broken. The blessing of the Lord will make rich. It will add no sorrow. You be will be released today. You will be released today. You will be released today. To the satanic, demonic, tormenting spirits that you've been overcome with. To the oppression and depression. It will be destroyed today. The power of darkness that has been trying to subdue you and push you back. The stubborn, strong yokes shall not be broken today. They shall be destroyed. And the yokes that have been binding you will not be broken. They will be destroyed. Heavy burden you've been carrying so long. You're going to lay them down today. You're going to take them where they belong. They've been nailed to the cross. I've come to your prison cell. I've come to your jail cell. I've come to you to say, Jesus took care of it all the way with the death, burial, and resurrection. Blotting out handwritings of ordinances that were against us, which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. He nailed it to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Try something over them in it. Today, the Lord is going to destroy the yoke. And you are going to leave here triumphant over the things that's had you bad. The power of the resurrected Jesus Christ, who had the keys of death, hell, and grave. He is going to be released upon you. Yes, Spencer, and praise team. He is the chain breaker. I called Mickey yesterday morning, said get a hold of Tim and them. I know y'all got a set, but I want chain breaker tomorrow. We're going to break some chains today. I tell you in the Holy Ghost, we're going to break some chains today. I will end this service differently than I've ended any service in my life. And when I do, the chains are going to break. You and your family, your life's work. All that concerns you. We're going to leave this place today victorious. The angels are going to take care of you when you leave here. They will not only protect you, but they're going to minister unto you. Michael is going to stand up. They're going to fight your battles. They're going to be seen angels and they're going to be unseen angels. They're going to fight with you in the valley and they're going to fight with you in the mountaintop. I have come to communion this morning to declare this is going to be not some weeping, crying, forgiving service today. We're going to have a feast of freedom. And when you drink that today, you're going to feel freedom break loose in your life. 
Now we're emotional right now. I plan on you being that way. Thank you because you're helping me preach. But I'm not going to do it on emotion today. When we end this message, we're going to do it with the word of God. The devil better get out of here. He's in trouble. It'll be according to his word. Deliverance means, let's go through it now. Deliverance means the act of being set free. Our great God and Savior is a deliverer. He has a history in this book of delivering people over and over. He delivered Noah from the flood. He delivered the Israelites out of Egypt's cruel bondage. And he parted the Red Sea. And Pharaoh drowned in that same Red Sea. That God destroyed Jericho and its mighty walls. Where many chariots could ride abreast. They fell flat. And Rahab, the harlot's house, with a red cord. Oh, can you imagine? All those walls fall flat. And you look and there's one section of that wall that didn't fall. Because one lady was obedient to God and hung a red cord out. Y'all really believe that? Oh man, I believe every word of the word. You really believe that happened? All walls fall flat except that one little section where a red cord was hanging out because she was obedient to the blood of Almighty God. God can do that with a red cord. He can sure do it with the blood of the cross this morning for you. Spared her and her household of 150. I declare that deliverance power by the same God who spoke to Isaac from the knife. Delivered Joseph from the pit and put him in the palace. Who sent down fire from heaven on Mount Carmel. When Elijah prayed a 63 word prayer. It consumed the burnt sacrifice. It burned the wood. It burned the stones. It licked up the dust. And it licked all the water that was in the trenches. 1 Kings 18.38 That same God delivered the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. From a burning fiery furnace that had been heated seven times hotter than usual. Who would not bow to Nebuchadnezzar? We are not even careful to answer you, O king. We want to take, remember that message? We're not even careful to answer you, O king. We don't know what all we got to go through. You put us where you want to put us. You put us in a fire that you heat seven times hotter. But we want you to know our God will deliver us. But then they gave those words I preached on. But if not, if our God doesn't believe, deliver us, we're not bound to you. That's what the devil's got to know today. I'm not bound to you, devil. I don't care what may happen or not happen. I'm not bound to you. I've got my mind made up that I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. Our God whom we serve. He delivered Daniel in the den of hungry lions. Darius, a heathen king. Everybody say a heathen king. He said to Daniel when he was cast. Can you imagine this? How would you like to be that kind of king? When he was casting him in a den of hungry lions. The king said, not uh, not Daniel. The king said, the God whom thou servest continually. He will deliver thee. If a heathen king. Gets a hold of Daniel. And before he ever throws him in the den of lion, he gets a hold of him. He said, let me tell you something, Dan. I'm going to have to put you there because I put my decree on it and they tricked me into doing it. But let me tell you, the God you serve will deliver you. That wasn't a prophet. That wasn't a preacher. That was a heathen king. And if a heathen king believes that our God can deliver us, there ought to be some saints. That's been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. That believe that God can set you free. He came back that next morning. That old heathen king, old Daniel, serve the living God. Is thy God whom thou servest continually. I love that line. He wasn't just a every other day God. He said the God whom you serve continually. Is he able to deliver thee from the lions? Then send Daniel unto the king. O king, live forever. My God has sent his angels and has shut the lion's mouth and they have not hurt me. 
If God delivered the Hebrew boys, if God delivered Daniel, if God delivered Rahab, if God delivered Israel, if God delivered Noah, if God delivered Isaac, God on 1115 on this day in August, God can deliver you from whatever has you back. We're not the Old Testament covenant. We're the New Testament covenant. We've been circumcised with baptism in Jesus' name. You get your hands out of your pocket. You get your head up. You throw your head high and say, devil, I've walked this valley long enough. I'm headed to the mountaintop. God's deliverance is always a sign of his love and mercy. The word salvation, everybody say salvation. salvation. Is the same as deliverance and salvation. One of the greatest revelation, listen, is the revelation of self-deliverance. You've never heard pastor say that. It's when we choose to lose our self from the control of darkness. You cannot do that on your own. So don't leave here thinking I'm promoting the modern day thing that you work everything out. But I am telling you that you have the ability to make a choice today to allow God to take care of your situation. You want to keep it? You can keep it. But today, if you say, God, I'm tired of that. God, I'm through with that. Now, God, I'm making a choice. I will no longer allow that to control me. Well, you don't have Bible for that. Oh, really? You think I've gone off into false doctrine? Been studying a little bit this week. Let me give you a little scripture here. You can exercise that power authority. Jesus told us, cast out the beam from thine own eye. He didn't say he was going to do it. He said, you cast that beam out. He said, you have the power to cast the beam out of your life. So today, you say in the name of Jesus and through the power and authority you've given me, I cast that oppression and depression and bondage and financial bondage and sickness that's been in my family. I cast it out today cast it out of your eye cast it out of your spirit cast it out of your soul you have to do it in the power of the Holy Ghost you have to do it you have to step out you have to step out the other apostles never got out of the boat well Peter sank that's the negativity in you he also walked on water and there's only one other man that's ever done that and that was Jesus Jesus honored his faith and Jesus saved him. What you need to do today is say, I'm going to cast that out of my eye. I'm going to quit letting that control me. I'm going to quit thinking negative thoughts. I'm stepping out. I'm casting the beam out of my eye. I'm getting rid of it myself. I'm not going to sit around and expect God to come wave some wand under me. I'm casting it out of me today. I'm making a choice. I will no longer live this way. You tormenting spirit, I cast you out. I'll do it in the name of Jesus in a minute, but right now I'm doing it myself. You no good, filthy devil, I cast you out. I'm tired of you tormenting me about my children. I'm tired of living in fear. I'm tired of wondering about this. I'm tired of wondering about that. I cast out out of my spirit today. pastor has flown crazy to got to get here to tell you take some spiritual responsibility yourself quit giving it all to Jesus oh don't misunderstand that statement give everything to him but what I'm saying is quit expecting him to come do everything you step back today Jesus you've got it so I'm not doing this on my own I'm only doing it by the authority you've given me In the name of Jesus, I take authority over my life. 
In the name of Jesus, I take authority over my situation. Everybody say it's going to happen. Everybody say it's going to happen today. Say, Pastor, got a prophetic anointing on him. It's going to happen today. Oh, you didn't sound like you mean it. It's going to happen today. Don't say it if you don't mean it. I don't want you to say it. Those of you that believe it's going to happen, say, I believe it's going to happen today. Stir up the gift within you. Stir up yourself to pray. Stir up yourself to get in the word of God. You got to do something yourself. You cast it out. You get in this book and start studying. You can cast it out. You get in prayer. You can cast it out. I'm not going to allow indifference and lukewarmness to rob me of my deliverance. You must open your mouth. Deliverance is in your mouth. You must open your mouth. Take the tape off of your mouth. The devil has taped you up and tied you up and tangled you up to where you're a Christian. You can't hardly move. Today, you're going to cut the bands off. Today, you're going to take the tape off. Devil, oppression, depression. I bind it in the name of Jesus and I take authority over it in my life. Many of you are frustrated with life. You're overwhelmed with doubt, fear, and failure. You're battling stress and pressure that often lead to emotional and physical problems. Some of us are having emotional problems and physical problems because of the stress and the pressure that we're living under with our jobs, with the race of this world, with where America is. We're under stress. We're under emotional stress. You sweet mothers raising your children and we dads trying to help. We've got emotional and physical stress. We're battling that. But Jesus spent much of his time ministering, Bible, ministering to those that were oppressed. Multitudes came to hear him, to be near him. He healed and delivered them from evil spirits. Deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is a miracle ministry. Plug into pastor. We can be set free through authoritative prayer and warfare prayer. Supernatural healings happen. Long-term bondage destroyed. Hidden roots will die. Inexplicable problems will be solved. Stubborn obstacles will be removed. Cycles of failure today will be broken. Frustration and desire will be eliminated. Discouragement and disappointment will be overcome. The puzzling problems of life will be solved today. Peace and joy you will experience today. The abundant life will be enjoyed today. Failures that call bitterness, failures that have come against you, prosperity and success is on your way. I've never heard you say that, Pastor. I haven't. I haven't been a prosperity preacher. And I'm not a prosperity preacher today. But I'm tired of us living in the crumb mentality of the apostolic church. It's time God blesses you, prospers you. It's time God blesses your finances. It's time God blesses your home. In the name of Jesus, advancement will be seen in different areas of your life. You will experience success. After today, you will experience success in relationships. You're going to experience success financially. You're going to experience success in your ministry. Deliverance eliminates spiritual obstacles that impede your progress. Deliverance makes the rough places smooth and the crooked places straight. You can see the enemy rooted from your life today. You can live free from bondage. The word in prayer will break you through. Breakthrough is not always immediate. You may not leave here and just say, whoa, man, I don't feel what pastor just told me. I it may not happen today. God promised Israel he would drive the enemy out little by little. Deuteronomy 7, 22, Exodus 23, 29, 30. Unless you understand this, you will quit praying and you will give up. Let me declare to you again, your deliverance is coming. It may not be total today, but you're on a journey that your deliverance is coming. 
Everybody say I. I. Have the ability. To bind. Or to lose. Oh, you're with me today. Thank you. I. Have the ability. To bind. Or to lose. Because Jesus told me that. Because Jesus told me that. Webster Dictionary defines the word bind as. To make secure by time. To confine. To restrain. To restrict. To constrain with legal authority. To exert a restraining or compelling effect. It also means to bind. To arrest. To apprehend. To handcuff. To lead captive. To take charge of. To lock up. To restrain or put a stop to. Binding is done by legal authority. And we have legal authority in the name of Jesus Christ to bind satanic forces. In the name of Jesus, I bind that oppression. In the name of Jesus, I bind that sickness. In the name of Jesus, I I bind those demonic attacks. In the name of Jesus, I bind. There ought to be a binding spirit going on right now. You ought to just start speaking. I bind that. Whatever you're up against, just start saying, I bind that. I got authority over that. I speak against that. Bind it. Sin, iniquity, perversion, sickness, disease, infirmity, death, destruction, curses, witchcraft, sorcery, divination, poverty, lie, strife, lust. Pride, rebellion, fear, torment, confusion, doubt, fear, unbelief. That's all the Bible that I just read. And he said, you have the power to bind it. We have been given legal authority. Don't have time to get on this, but I'm going to jump a rabbit. I'm just going to run to here to the back of the church. When something happened to dad, mother signed over their estate to me to be the Executor, I have the power of attorney to operate in my mother's stead. Y'all think I'll go put her out of her house today? What y'all think? I have that authority to do anything I want to do with my father and mother's estate because my mother gave me that. And my heavenly father, whose name is Jesus Christ, he gave me legal authority to operate it, he said. He said, I can't be here, so here's my credit card. I'm going away to prepare your mansion, so here's my checkbook. You just write in whatever you need, and my bank can cash any check that you're big enough to write. My bank can handle, my bank hadn't gone bankrupt. I can handle any check that you can write. So everybody said, that's what bind means. Say, I got the authority to bind. Loose means. He said, you can bind and you can loose. So now we got bind and now we're going to loose. It means to untie. It means to free from restraint. It means to detach. It means to disjoin. It means to divorce. It means to separate, not from one another. It means to unhitch. It means to get free. It means to get loose. It means to escape. It means to break away. It means to unbind. It means to unchain. It means to unfetter. It means to free, release, and unlock. It means to liberate. It means to disconnect or forgive. People need to understand you can be loosed from curses. You can be loose from evil inheritance. You can be loose from DNA generational curses. You can be loose from familiar spirits. You can be loose from sin. You can be loose from guilt. You can be loose from shame. You can be loose from condemnation. You can be loose from control. You can be loose from, denom- from domination. You can be loose from manipulation. You can be 
loose from intimidation. You can be loose from mind control. You can be loose from religious control. You can be loose from sickness. You can be loose from disease. You can be loose from deception. You can be loose from false teaching. You can be loose from sin and habits. You can be loose from worldliness. You can be loose from carnality. You can be loose from demons. You can be loose from traditions. You can be loose from ungodly soul ties. You can be loose from ungodly pledges. You can be loose from ungodly vows that you made. You can be loose from past words you have been spoken. You can be loose from trauma and you can be loose from cults. I have the authority to loose myself. Now for one minute, you bind whatever needs to be bound in your life and you loose whatever needs to be loose in your life. Take one minute and do that right now. Let pastor catch his breath and you bind and loose in your life. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. God bless you. You may be seated. Can pastor just talk to you just a minute? I hope you're a little more desperate than other things than you were with some of your prayers right there. You need to get after it and tell God, I'm meaning business today. I think I'm battling some of you don't believe what I'm preaching today. I'm battling some of you that lights knock the breath out of you. You, you, you don't think what I'm preaching is really true. You're a great Christian. You love God. But you've been in the battle so long you're weary. But today, pastor's come to tell you, you can bind what's coming to loose. And you can loose what's in you. David said in Psalm 51, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness, according to thy multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out all of my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sin. Expect deliverance to hit this place in the next 15 minutes. When we eat the bread of the broken body, when we drink this cup of the fruit of the wine, representing the shed blood of Jesus Christ, my mind and my thoughts are going to be covered by the blood. My home and my family and my possessions will be covered by the blood and the blood shall be to you for a token under the houses where you are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt and I will overcome the devil by the blood of Jesus Christ and I will multiply grace and peace in my life and I will become perfect through the blood of Jesus Christ now I have boldness to enter into the presence of almighty God and the holiest of holies And today I declare to myself that I will step out in boldness in the Holy Ghost. And I will receive deliverance. Today I declare at 1133, it's time to take off your prison garb. Jehoiakim, you're coming out of prison. Your pastor flew all day and made a unbelievable effort to get here to you this morning to tell you you are coming out but I can't bring you out and nobody else can bring you out till you want to bring yourself out but if you make the choice today I'm coming out he will renew your mind he will change your thought process he will change your thinking and when you leave this place everything may not be done but it will be the beginning of great things in your life because you are casting the beam out of your life and you're going to quit saying it's always been this way and it's always going to be that I rebuke that dirty nasty spirit in the name of Jesus it's not going to always be that way and it's not going to always be that way this morning we are going to break the bond if you can step out by faith and claim it in Jesus name he's gonna break the mind if you don't mind would you put a picture of my family up there I would like the one of the lumpkins if you don't mind right there that's yesterday it was it's Jimmy Delane's 45th wedding anniversary and that guy in the green shirt there Marcel's why we have seven. 
It was 10 years ago. And Mickey was burdened for her nephew. And when I got through preaching, she walked to this pulpit and said, I got a nephew that we ain't been telling everybody about. And you got situations. And we're starting a ministry. She got Marcel and the leaders of kids that have been bound by drugs and alcohol. And they got to praying. He came at the beginning of 2017. I said, Jimmy, you got to help preachers and wives. We're all living in glass. Uh, uh, Supposed to be in glass houses, but we pull the curtains and we're all hid behind things. We got stuff that all the believers don't think the preacher has anything wrong. You got to tell them how bad it is. Jim and Jelaine walked to this pulpit January one year ago as a broken person. He said, you rejoice because your kid is preaching the gospel. You rejoice because your kid's involved on the staff with you. He said, I rejoice when my kid's been sober for 24 hours. He said, you don't understand. I rejoice when my kid had been sober for 24 hours. He laid his soul open to the entire congregation. And he went home. And I mean, he talked about Trey. And Trey said, I would like to see the DVD. And Jimmy showed him the DVD of him speaking to 3,000 ministers. And Trey began to repent. And he has not had another drop of alcohol. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I can tell you what's happening today. It's been 19 months. Isn't that pretty good? He's a chain breaker. There's another one of my nephews right there. His name is Hudson. Hudson's had a tremendous battle. Hudson's had his back against the wall. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I can declare today, it's been nine months since he's touched drugs. So I don't know what you've got in your family. I don't know about your sons and your daughters and your brothers and your sisters and your uncles and your aunts and your nephews and your husbands and your wife. But I know the chain breaker and I know that I got the authority to bind and I got the authority to loose and I got the authority to set free. And today in this room, we will be set free. There will be deliverance and you will be set free. Does anybody believe that was me? Does anybody believe that with Pastor? Anybody believe that with Pastor? How many believe our children are going to be saved? How many believe our family are going to be saved? We're getting ready to see something happening here. Because it's getting ready to move from Pastor Anthony Mangan. That's been anointed powerfully by Almighty God. To strictly the word of God. But all of our men are coming to serve communion. And right now in your spirit, I want you to get a war in spirit. And I want you to say in the name of Jesus. Everybody say we prayed and fasted and repented all week long. Say I prayed and I fasted and I repented all week long. And today, I'm the Jehoiakim. Brother Perry, I'm the Jehoiakim that God's going to bring out. And he's not just going to set us on the throne. He's going to set us above the throne. Some of you have been in bondage for 37 years. Some of you have been in bondage. And your family has been in bondage. Today, come on a trip with your pastor. And when we come get this communion, something is going to happen in your spirit that's going to break loose in the name of Jesus. It's going to happen in your spirit. Men, through the authority of the name of Jesus. You're not just carrying juice this morning. You're carrying a message that I've been carrying with me for days. You're carrying a message that I felt so strong about getting here that if I had to charter a jet, I was going to get here today. You're carrying something in this gentleman. You understand when they come by, you say in the name of Jesus. Because when we take this today, we're going to have a feast in this place. And when you take this today, something's going to break loose in your life. It's going to begin a journey in your life. 
Go to your spots in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Say, Pastor, I believe it. Let's stand to our feet and rejoice in the God of our salvation. Would you just give God a praise with me for a little bit? Ladies, would you be seated just a moment? Men, ladies, would you be seated just a moment? All men, remain. all of our visitors, you can remain standing with us. We're glad the Saddler's here. Just remain standing with us. <clears throat> you know tomorrow night is communion in the home. Everybody say communion in the home. In football, what makes Peyton Manning so great and Tom Brady is they're good at audibles. And this morning I'm calling an audible. We're still going to take communion tomorrow. Look at me, men. Ladies, you're the priest of your home. Would you stand? You're a single parent. Would you stand? This is for you likewise. Thank you, ladies. This is for you likewise. I empower you, ladies. Tomorrow night, we're going to go to our homes. But pastor's not going to furnish it for you. In the Old Testament, they had to prepare their own lamb. They had to go get their own lamb. They had to bring it and present it, a perfect lamb, to the priest so that they could put the blood on the doorpost for their family. Tomorrow night, we're going to still have communion. But tomorrow, you're going to go to the store, you men are single moms. You're going to buy the own grape juice, and you're going to buy the cracker. And tomorrow night, you, as the priest of your home, is still going to serve your family communion. But pastor's not going to provide it for you. Ladies, when your men serve you communion tomorrow night, or mamas, when you serve communion, your kids are going to know that you went and prepared the communion for you, not pastor. And there's going to be a deliverance that is going to be in our homes tomorrow night. That's going to be so every man that would try to do that. Would you raise your hand? You'll try to thank you for that. You'll go to the store. Don't get something out of the thing. If, my, if, if you got grape juice in the icebox, don't use that. Let your wife and your, your mother of your children know you made an effort to go to the store. Get everything ready for us to take communion. And you're going to pray over your family tomorrow night. And you're going to plead the blood over your children that's getting ready to start school. And you're going to plead the blood over your wife and your single moms over your children. And God's going to do a work. Ladies, get on your feet and shout about what Pastor just said. Would you do that? Would everybody just turn and look? Let's look. This place is full this morning. Just turn and look at this place. It's full this morning. Everybody move to your right. We'll do it quick. Visitors, join us. We want you to join us. Move to your right. Would you do that? Come on. Move quickly to your right. We're going to take communion. Then go back to your seat. Pastor's going to serve you communion this morning. This is going to get, hey, folks, everybody say, Pastor. Pastor, I believe you. I'm getting ready to tell you I've never done this and God's getting ready to break some things in this building. Get your communion and go back to your seat. Move as quickly as you can move if you can, please. Somebody got a shout? You believe you're coming to get deliverance? Come down that aisle shouting. Say it in the name of Jesus, I'm coming after my deliverance. I said in the name of Jesus, I'm coming after my deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming after my deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming after. Those of you that have your communion, you can go ahead and begin opening because sometimes those things are a little contrary. We would have had regular communion, but I didn't get this until yesterday and I called Pastor Gentry and he helped me do this. You can go ahead and begin to open it because sometimes it's hard to open. And if you'll just hold the bread and hold the juice until we take it together. Please make sure you take care of them and don't lay them on the floor because that will stain our carpet. Try to take care of it when we get through taking communion today. That's it. Just move as quickly as you can. We've got a crowd here today. That's it, runners. Make sure we keep going. Oh, now, we're going to be standing here about 10 minutes, so if you need to catch your breath or something, catch your breath. But please don't sit down. If you can just stand. I'm awfully tired in my body. If you'll just stand with me 10 or 15 more minutes, I'm going to tell you God's going to do something. 
This, this, a pastor is done preaching. The word of God is getting ready. I've been preaching the word, but it's getting ready to speak directly to you. And I want you to get ready to repeat after me. We're going to be repeating for about 10 minutes. So get ready to repeat after pastor when I start. That's it. Move as quickly as you can. That's it. Thank you, Ryan. with us. I'm so glad you're here. You've honored me to come today. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Devil, you getting ready to have a bad day here? Oh, Mr. Devil. Maybe we're going to see communion differently than we've ever seen it, Mr. Devil. You getting ready to have a bad day here, Mr. Devil. I'm speaking and Mother's singing. He's getting ready to have a bad day around here. Everybody been served. Have you got it open? Everybody got it open. It's a, it's a job to get it open. Everybody got it open. Anybody doesn't have it open, we need to bring you another one. Whatever we need to do. So everybody ready? I'm getting ready to do something that I haven't done since my pastor died. I said, Sister Tenny, in fact, you can sit down just a moment because I want you to be rested. You can sit down just a moment. I want you to be rested to do what we're going to do. And my pastor gave a prophecy to this church in 2013 and I appreciate Jason the work he did yesterday to make this happen for us everybody got communion I don't want to start until everybody's got everybody got your communion you can be seated just a moment okay you can stop the music thank you Cam okay we'll throw brother Tenney up there this is the special word of the Lord this morning that has your address on it the Lord says I am well pleased with the atmosphere oh. that I feel. Many times you have said, Lord, move me. Listen. But this morning, you have moved me. <laughs> I will hear the voice of your prayer, your supplication. Yes. I will plunge your sins. Listen. under my blood and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness yes. only you can dredge them up again <laughs> Listen. I do weary that I have forgiven and forgiven I heard your repentance why do you return dogs to your vomit and pigs to your mire I will bring you out once more but I ask you not only to remember that you are totally forgiven uh -huh. at total repentance, uh -huh. but I did say, go thy way, sin no more. Uh -huh. As you take the symbol of my bread and body, my broken body and my blood, I promise you, if you will exercise it, I will give you special grace uh -huh. that breaks habits uh, unhealthy relationships uh, and you will leave here not only forgiven uh, but delivered saith the Lord uh, stand uh, giving praise let a shout be in your soul come on you believe that word from Brother Tim let a shout be in your soul let a shout be in your soul Okay, thank you, Cam. Take the bread, and here we go. Wait, 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 don't take it yet. Sorry. Hold the bread right there. You can hold it down because I don't want you holding your hand up. You can hold it right there. We're going to the scripture. You're going to repeat after me in prayer. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Satan, you have lost the war in heaven. Revelation 12 and 7. 
Let all the enemies that make war with the Lamb be destroyed. Revelation 17 and 14. What are you doing, Pastor? We're praying the word. I do not war after the flesh, but after the spirit. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. Deliver me from every strong enemy. From them that are too strong for me. Psalm 18 and 17. Deliver me and bring me into a large place. Psalm 18 and 19. For I am your anointed. And you give me great deliverance. Psalm 18 and 50. I will tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon I will trample underfoot. Psalm 91, 13. I will tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Luke 10, 19. I will tread down the wicked. Their ashes will be under my feet. Malachi 4 and 3. I will arise and I will thresh and I will beat the enemy to pieces. Micah 4, 13. And I close the door to every demonic spirit that would attempt to come into my life in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 66, 17. I will bind and cast out Every thief that would try to steal my finances in the name of Jesus, John 10 and 10. I will bind and cast out any spirit that would try to steal my joy in the name of Jesus. I will bind and expose and cast out every demon that would try to be a stealth or be undetected that would come into my life. 2 Samuel 19 and 3. Lord, Cleanse my temple. Drive out my thief from my life. I bind and cast out all the familiar spirits that would try to operate in my life in Jesus' name. Isaiah 8 and 19. I bind and rebuke any demon that will try to block in any way the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke devils in high places in the name of Jesus. In 2 Chronicles eleven fifteen, I break any fellowship with devils through sin. Through the flesh, through the sacrifice, in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10, 20. I command all devils to leave my children in the name of Jesus alone. Mark 7, 29. Lord, expose the human devils in my life. Cast them out in the name of Jesus. John 6, 70. Lord, expose any child of the devil that would try to come into this church. Acts 13 and 10. Let every spirit hiding from me be exposed in your name. Joshua 10, 16. Let every hidden snare from my feet be exposed. Jeremiah 18, 20. I stand against and I rebuke every wile of the devil. Ephesians 6 and 11. Give me strength to bring forth my destiny. Give me strength to bring forth my destiny. I loose myself from every spirit of error. John, 1 John 4 and 6. Lord, let me operate. Not in the wrong spirit, but in the right spirit. Luke 9, 55. I loose myself from every spirit of whoredom and pornography. In the name of Jesus. Hosea 4 and 12. Let me have and walk in an excellent spirit. Daniel 6 and 3. I will heed to my spirit at all times. Malachi 2.15 I bind, I bind, and I cast out any spirit that would try to tear apart my life in any manner in the name of Jesus. Mark 9 and 20 Lord, stir up the spirit to do your will in my life. Haggai 1.14 I bind, I cast out demons. I cast out demons of fear. I cast out demons that are intimidating me. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I bind. I cast out all seducing spirits. I bind. I cast out all seducing spirits. I bind. I cast out all seducing spirits that would come my way. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. I bind. And I rebuke that angel of darkness that's trying to show himself his light. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. I bind Satan 
the deceiver from releasing, releasing any deception in my life. I bind the deceiver from releasing any deception in my life. Revelation 12 and 9. I bind. I cast out all spirits of self-deception. I bind. I cast out all spirits of self-deception. I bind. I cast out all spirits of self-deception. I bind. I cast out any spirit of sorcery that would deceive me in Jesus name that's Revelation 18 23 Lord let no man deceive me Matthew 24 and 4 I bind and rebuke all witchment bewitchment and witchcraft that would keep me from obeying truth Galatians 3 and 1 deliver me out of the hand of the wicked and unreasonable men 2 Thessalonians 3 and 2 Evil spirits, evil spirits, evil spirits, leave my life. I now speak the word, Matthew 8 and 6. I rebuke, I steal, I cast out the avenger, 8 and 2. I bind, I cast out creeping spirits that would attempt to creep into my life. Ezekiel 8 and 10. You okay out there? We're praying the word. We're praying the word. I renounce all earthly, sensual, demonic wisdom. I, that's James 3.15. Luke 13.32 says, I cast out devils and I will be perfect. I do all of that in the name of Jesus. That was not pastor. Everybody say, that was not pastor. But that was your word. Now I prayed your word. Now in the name of Jesus, I take your body and I claim deliverance. Go ahead. When you take it, rejoice in the God of your salvation. Everybody ready? Everybody okay out there? Y'all okay in the balcony up there? You ready for everything to go in Jesus' name? Get that cup in your hand. I cover my mind. I cover my thoughts with the blood of Jesus Christ. I put the doorpost over my, the blood over my possessions. Exodus 12, 13. I overcome the devil through the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12 and 11. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus and receive multiple grace and peace. 1 Peter 1 and 2. I am made perfect through the blood of everlasting covenant. Hebrews 13, 20. I have boldness to enter the presence of God through the blood. Hebrews 10, 19. My conscience is purged from dead works to serve a living God through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9, 14. I eat the body of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus. 6, John 6, 54. I have redemption through the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed from the power of evil. Ephesians 1 and 7. Come on, y'all losing faith in me. This is the word of God. I rebuke all spirits of torment and fear because I have peace in the blood of Jesus. Colossians 1 and 20. I receive healing and health through the blood of Jesus. I receive abundance. I receive prosperity through the blood of Jesus. I receive deliverance through the blood of Jesus. I receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the anointing through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus bears witness that today I will be delivered. First John 5 and 8. I will be delivered today. I rebuke and cast out all spirits of guilt. Here we go and we're about done. I rebuke and cast out all spirits of guilt. All spirits of shame, all spirits of condemnation through the blood of Jesus Christ. I break the power of sin and iniquity through the blood of Jesus. That's Hebrews 10, 17. I rebuke Satan, the accuser of my life through the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12 and 10. I command all accusers in my life 
to depart through the blood in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and cast out all spirits that try to slander me and accuse me. For through the name of Jesus, I am no longer condemned. I am free and set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. I release the voice of the blood. I release this blood against all demons and evil spirits that would try to condemn me. Hebrews 12, 24. Devil, for the last 15 minutes, we have done nothing but pray that word. That was not pastor trying to get people to shout. That was not pastor trying to get people to run the aisles. That was your word. And we took that body to know we've got the victory over the devil. Now we're going to take your blood and chains are going to be broken and lives are going to be transformed and people are going to be set free through the authority of the name of Jesus and everything that's had you bound and every demon that's tormented you. You can now drink that blood in Jesus' name. And there ought to be a shout in this congregation. There ought to be a shout of praise. Everybody ought to talk in tongues right now. Come on. It's one minute after 12. Don't get in a hurry right here. You quit letting the devil intimidate you. You quit letting the devil come against you. We've taken authority in the name of Jesus. You take this cup with you everywhere you go. You put it where you can see it. You say in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. There's got to be a feast here today. There's got to be a celebration here today. Some of you need to shout now. Some of you need to dance now. Some of you need to run now. Come on, young people, let me hear your voice. Come on, men, let me hear your voice. Come on, coach, shout it from up there. You've been delivered. We're free. We're free. We're free. We're free. free. Brian, we're free. We're free. 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 I'll tell you what, we're going to do chain breaker. Let's cut chain breaker. We're going to see how good y'all are on the fly. I've been delivered. The hold the devil's had on me. He ain't got no more. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. Can y'all do that one? Kick it off. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. The hold. The hold the the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Been delivered by the hand of the Lord. One more time. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. The hold, the hold the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Been delivered by. How long you been dry? Come up here. How long you been dry? About 100 days now. You failed a whole bunch of times. Yes, sir, a bunch of times. You look at all them people. I see them. If they ain't with you, I am. Thank you, God. I don't care how many times you fall, but you ain't going to fall no more. I don't care how many times you fall, we're going to be here picking you up. Because you got a mom and daddy that's pleaded the blood of Jesus over you. You're going to heaven. Grant, come up here. Come here, Grant, run. How long you been dry, Grant? Nine months. Nine months. George, Cindy, you ought to be praising him back there. Grant, pastor love you since you was a kid. You got the brain and you got the emotion. You could turn the world upside down if we ever get you turned on to Jesus like you turned on. You went to street ministry yesterday, didn't you? That's the plan, isn't it? You went to street ministry yesterday. How many y'all baptized yesterday? One for three. Three. They wrote me. You go. Oh, it don't matter. You went. You out get the door. Oh, hey, hey. That's what the God's gonna do with our children. We're gonna.
Don't forget all the mistakes. Change of being broken. Rejoice. Come on, rejoice with me just a minute. Rejoice. 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 Hold the devil high on me. He ain't got no more. Pastor Ryan will be preaching. It's going to be great. Pastor Ryan, such a great man. 5.30, the prayer rooms. 6 o'clock, the evangelistic service. I hope you know that today I didn't preach with just a normal anointing. I hope you know today was very prophetic. My mind was so bogged down this morning before I ever got up. I said, Mickey, I always pray over you. I'm asking you to pray over me. But when I walk on this platform, my, that, that thing can't go, and it's just been rolling. I, if y'all want to stay, I could preach another hour. But we better not. Now, don't everybody leave at one time. What, what's mother doing here? No, you ain't getting my feet. I'm getting at your feet, woman. You're the one produced all this. You're the one. Don't leave at one time, because we just have a big old parking jam, okay? Traffic jam. Grab somebody and say, hey, would you rejoice with me? Come on, turn and grab somebody's hand. Say, would you rejoice with me? Chains have been broken today. Chains have been broken today. You want to be baptized? Come on up here. We'll baptize you in Jesus' name. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Psalm 19 verse 1, Psalm 19 verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. He does not stop with what's in the earth, he moves to the heavens. And one of the greatest symbols he's given us in the heavens is the sun. The S-U-N explains the S-O-N. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. What is the sun? It's a ball of fire. Now watch this. Where I come from originally, Martha's Vineyard, they have beautiful beaches. And so they have what they call sun worshipers. These are people that go to the beach and lay out before the sun. See, to be a worshiper, even the world understands it. They call them sun worshipers, and this is the requirement. You must go out from protection and expose yourself to the sun to worship. Then you must expose yourself and lay down before the sun until the sun changes you. You don't have to tell somebody. You don't have to ask somebody if you've been in the sun. At the same token, you can tell somebody when they've had a lot of sun, you can tell them, you can, especially in the winter months, you don't have to wonder if they stayed here in Wisconsin. Where'd you go? Because the sun has transformed their image literally their looks it transform and that's why when you're a true sun worshiper you will come out from the protective covering of the world that shields you from the love of God you will begin to peel off your armor and expose yourself to God you will lay down before God until God changes you and a true sun worshiper doesn't just lay on his back. He flips over and lays on his stomach because he wants to change all the way around.